Hi everyone, my name is Claire Liu and I'm the CEO of Know Your Company and today I have a really special guest with me. I have Amy Gallo who is the contributing editor for Harvard Business Review, which let's admit it, all of us, including myself, read all the time hoping to become a better leader and it's where you know I personally have learned a lot and Amy in particular is an absolute expert on conflict management and resolution and so she's actually written the HBR guide to dealing with conflict I actually have it and I highly recommend you pick it up if you don't uh, so it's a it's a real honor and treat to have Amy here today and I'm gonna ask her this one question about leadership Alrighty, thanks for having me, Claire. Absolutely. So, Amy, my question for you that I've been asking folks is, what's something you wish you would have learned earlier as a leader? Well, I have two things um, that I wanted to share, one of which is, first, the thing I really didn't know early in my career, which I've learned um, over time, is the importance of relief at work. I think I came into, uh, you know, organizations and business. And I was a management consultant earlier in my career. And I really felt I have my friends have people I work with. And I was always very boundaried about, um, you know, who I spent time with. And, and I thought, you know, work isn't personal, you know, keep focus on business. And yet I was also feeling a lot of caring feelings for the people I work with, I started to feel like these are people I want to hang out with more. And I, I really wasn't sure how to navigate all of that. And I think I wish I knew earlier the importance that that co-workers as friends in your life, um, both from a just making you feel supported and, um, you know, making work feel, feel fun and exciting, but also a performance perspective you know these networks that we build these genuine relationships we build are incredibly important to our performance and how we work done and I mean that in a mercenary you know I'll scratch your back you scratch my back way but right. it's how we it's how we gather information it's how um, you, you know we understand how different parts of the organization work. It's how we make sense of the, the work that we need to do. It also makes gives us some meaning in, in the work we do. You know, it's much more fun for me to write an article for an editor that I consider a friend than an editor who I just consider a straight up co-worker. Yes. And, and it's, you know, it gives me to the work. So I wish I had known early on how important those relationships were and how much effort they took and how it was a, should have been a real con decision to build and, and foster those relationships earlier on. Definitely. I mean, and I know you have a second one too, so I want to get to, to, your, to the second uh, thing you wish you would have learned earlier, but um, I find that so interesting, Amy, because I think a lot of times as leaders, in fact, I remember having a very specific conversation with a friend of mine who's a CEO, and she said, Claire, it's so weird. She's like, I can't just get beers with my um, employees after work. It's different. And she's like, I, I don't really know how to navigate this sort of new place that I'm in as, as the CEO and as the co-owner of the business. And so I'm curious, you know, what do you think for you or and for others first causes that resistance as a leader to wanting to establish those relationships? Like, why do we why do we sort of, you know, pull back? Yeah, well, I think there's a couple things. There, there are risks, of course, to having relationships at work. There's a risk that yeah. you will overstep the boundary. There's a risk that your friendship won't work out and mm -hmm. it'll affect your work. There's a risk that you, you know, something will happen with the work that will affect your friendship. And I think, actually, as a leader, being friends with the people you manage can be really challenging because you do have to, um, you know, you have a lot of control over their well-being over their um, you know their ability to make a leaf living you know everything from when they take a vacation from what kind of projects they get you know to when they can leave the, the office during the day you know you make a lot of decisions for these people and when you're a friend I think it, you worry that your judgment is going to be clouded um, mm. my argument for why yeah. you should get over those risks yes, right, is yes, that exactly 
who are you know, going to care about these people, mm-hmm. whether you try to put up those boundaries or not. And it's very possible to have friendships with whom you have boundaries, even personal relationships. You have boundaries. But you don't, you know, it's been it's not seventh grade anymore. You're not spending time on the phone with them from six o'clock at night till two in the morning. But right? you have boundaries that are healthy for that situation. And you have to do the same with your coworkers and your work friends, right? You set up the boundaries that are appropriate for the situation, but you still have to care about one another. Um, or, or I should say, you're going to care about one another if you spend that much time together, if you're, you know, doing the, the work, work that's meaningful to you, you're going to bring yourself to that work. And it's, it's, you know, counterproductive to try to say, oh, no, I don't, I can't have it. Absolutely. I think, relationship. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah. Think, I think it's such a good point that, you know, this idea of boundaries and care and boundaries and relationships and boundaries and friendship, they're not mutually exclusive. It's not either or. It's like you can have both. And to your point about it, um, you know, being uh, counterproductive to to resist relationships. I mean, can you tell me like how this might play out in terms of, I mean, your expertise around conflict, right? So if mm-hmm. a leader sort of resists wanting to create these relationships, uh, I mean, how does that how does that manifest when, you know, you have to have a difficult conversation or people aren't getting along or you need to make a, a really big decision? A curious, yeah, on your thoughts on that. Sure. Well, there's two things. When you think about relations um, at work, they're really built on trust. And we, there are a lot of experts who talk about the different components of trust. So um, Amy Cuddy, for example, talks about, um, you know, warm and you have to be competent. And that that's what's going to make someone who works for you trust you. Um, now, that warmth doesn't necessarily have to be, hey, let's go get a beer, um, but it does have to be, you have to convey that you care about the person, mm-hmm. that you have their best interests at heart. heart. Um, and so again, it's not, it may not be the same friendship you have with someone you've known since college or someone who you know outside work, but it's still a friendship. There's still some caring yes. going on there. You just have to be able to navigate, okay, now I'm going to have these difficult conversations. The way that benefits you is that really what I've seen in my research on conflict, conflict resolution goes much better when both parties give each other the benefit of the doubt, and you're much more likely to give someone the benefit of the doubt if you believe they care about you and have your best interests at heart. I love so, yes. Yes. so if you really want someone, you know, if you want someone who works for you to to hear your difficult feedback, um, you know, be willing to take a tough performance review well, um, to be able to hear some news that's not so great about the decision someone higher up in the organization made, or even you made as the CEO, know, showing them that you care about them and you've considered that, that in your decision mm-hmm. is incredibly important. Absolutely. I think that is uh, an amazing Absolutely. insight that I want to like write down. I'll probably rewatch this video and go, oh, that was so smart, which is this idea that you know, when you're, that, that the conflict is, is often rooted in when we don't give the person the benefit of the doubt and that having empathy, creating that trust, being somewhat of a friend to a person helps give that benefit of the doubt. And that, I think that's brilliant. And I'm, I'm tucking that away in, in my head for sure. Um, well, so Amy, what's, what's the second thing that you wish you would have learned earlier as a leader? Sure. So- so as a conflict expert, you won't be surprised it has to do with conflict, which is that I wish I had learned to pay to disagree um, with my coworkers, with people who work for me, with people who work above me um, earlier. You know, I had an experience uh, early in my career as a management consultant. I had a client who I thought of as a really difficult person. Mm-hmm. And in reality, I just didn't agree with her. And I didn't know how to express that I- did a bunch of passive aggressive things that weren't really productive. Mm-hmm. Um, and <laughs> when it, she finally found out how much I disagreed, unfortunately, I sent her an email that I had meant to send to a colleague about everything I thought she was doing wrong, um, oh which was mortifying, right? <laughs> it's that, that moment you send, and I thought, oh my gosh, I've just lost this client for a company. I'm probably going to be fired. Right. Um, you know, and, and when I went and went, and my boss at the time advised me to do was apologize. 
and I went to talk to her, she said, why didn't you tell me this before? And I realized it, it, at that moment, she wanted me to disagree with her. That's why she's hired my company, is to give her good advice, and that requires disagreeing. Mm -hmm. And I think we've gotten to a place in so many organizations, in, in certainly in, our, in the U.S., um, in terms of on the political level, where we just look for people who are going to agree with us, and if we disagree, not doing right by the people we work with, um, by the people, by the clients we serve, and certainly by our organization. Um, you know, disagreements are an essential part of interacting with human beings, and it's a central part of doing good work. And if you don't have the skills and the courage to do that, you're not, you're not doing, you know, you're not doing your job, basically. Absolutely. I think that is, um, that is a, it's a <laughs> I, I'm like almost at a loss for words because I, I couldn't agree more that if, mm. you know, if we don't disagree as humans, like you said, we're not almost doing our jobs. And it's, it is to your point, such an essential part of, of how we interact. I, I feel like for, um, you know, I, I sometimes, and, and maybe, you know, this is a question to ask you is like, I sometimes, you know, think about like, why have we gotten to this place, whether it is in politics, whether it is in companies or even in, you know, relationships, family, otherwise, where we see conflict as bad? Like what in our heads has caused that to be the case? I mean, is it biological? Is it sort of social, um, you know, different uh, you know, uh, things in the environment that have happened? Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, you're right. We've come to equate any sort of disagreement with being unkind, which is just simply not true. And often, if you disagree thoughtfully, it can often be the kind thing to do, especially in a, in a work environment. Um, why we got to this place, you know, what I observe is that we are, we tend to be really conflict avoidant. It's understandable. Conflict is uncomfortable. Um, having, having someone disagree with you can feel like Threat, yes. Right. So, yes. you know, if, I, if you and I don't see eye to eye on the project plan, right, it, I start to question, well, am I going to get the resources I need? Mm -hmm. Does she think I'm good at my job? Am I going to lose my job? You know, is this is my identity too wrapped up in this project plan? Right. Like it becomes a threat to to a lot of things I hold, you know, dear. And so then, you know, our bodies respond with the stress response of what when we feel threatened yeah. but you know disagreeing over the project plan is different than being caught in the middle of a hurricane <laughs> um and yet our bodies respond similarly right so we have to figure out how to notice the difference between okay this is a minor threat um and the disagreement isn't necessarily going to hurt our relationship my job the project plan whatever it is and, and get over, over that. I mean, and to be fair, you know, I'm, I'm watching you listen to me and you're nodding and it feels great, right? We all love to you know, agree <laughs> right, with, I'm agree right? with like, you. Yeah. Not, exactly. I'm like, yes, Claire thinks I'm right. Like that feels so good. Um, and so we're all looking for that endorsement yes. um, and that validation. Hmm. But it's but if we constantly seek that approval, which is readily available to us, especially right where we're all going after the likes, we're all going after the share. Mm -hmm. um, I think it just feeds that that desire, and we're not willing to be uncomfortable mm. any longer. I know maybe I should be doing this while you're talking, right, and and promoting the idea of <laughs> disagreement more and productive disagreement, right? No, I disagree with you, Amy. Um, no, well, so, so so much of what you you've touched on is fascinating. One thing that particularly sort of piqued my interest is this idea of disagreeing. You said, or sorry, disagreement, disagreeing kindly, or that disagreeing with someone can be the kind thing to do. So tell me about how do you do that, right? So cuz it doesn't always feel like the kind thing to do. You know, sometimes, you know, I've been in a situation where I feel like I'm calling out a team member. Um, you know, I feel like I I have to tell someone who typically is performing really well, "Hey, you're not doing this right." Or, you know, this came totally out of left field. Those are hard conversations to have, or I disagree with the direction you're taking this project, um, you know, and, and you don't want to, right, have the employee leave or get mad at you or be bitter. So how do you, how do you disagree kindly? Yeah, a couple things. One, I, I would say, put yourself in the other person's shoes. So if you, you and I were working together and you had to give me negative feedback, 
I want that feedback, right? Most of us want to know how we're performing. If you the studies of you know employees show that they don't feel like they get enough feedback, both critical and positive. So put yourself in the in, oftentimes we're projecting our own discomfort when mm-hmm. we're un to, to disagree when the other person actually wants to hear what you have to say. Certainly my client in the story I've shared before wanted to know what, what I thought about our pro- project. I unfortunately was sharing it. So that's one thing. The other is I think try to separate the personal from the content of the disagreement. Most often at work, we're disagreeing about you know an objective or a goal of a project or a process, how we're going to make the decision, and we quickly associate that with our relationship, right? So just disagrees with the project, she must not think I'm good at my job, or she must think I'm not capable, right? So try to really separate, and what you can say to someone when you start to disagree is, this with our working relationship, I really enjoy working with you. I think you're smart and capable. Um, I want to share differences of opinion about X. It's really a disagreement about our, our task that we have to really distinguishing the differences. Um, and also disagreeing in a way that engages the other person, right? So it's not, um, you know, what negotiation experts say, you're on opposite sides of the table, butting heads, but you put the person on the same side of the table with you. So, hey, we have a problem we need to all together. We're not you know, eye to eye on how to do that. Let's put our heads together and find you know, a solution that works for everyone. Right? right. So that that's really collaborative language that you can that's kind and and, and thoughtful um, that I think is really helpful to, to making um, you know disagreement more palatable for people. Absolutely. Another yeah another quick tip also is, is to ask for permission. So you know if I'm in a meeting I'm sharing my project plan and someone just says that's not Never going to work, right? Like that to me totally blindsided me. The stress response, come, you know, kicks in. It feels horrible. But if someone says, "Hey, can I ask a question?" or, or "Do you mind if I just expressed a different opinion about this?" That gives me that moment to say, "Okay, I, this is not going to go the way I thought it was." I, you know, lets allows me to reset and puts me in receptive mode. Mm. So I'm now ready to hear what that person has to say. So oftentimes just asking permission gives that person a little break to switch their mentality so that they're more open to hearing your disagreement. Absolutely. I think so much of the other person on the other side of that conversation, you know, who you're disagreeing with, making sure that they're in, like you were saying, that receptive mode is so key. Because how many of us, I mean, just very personally speaking, if I'm in a bad mood, if I'm stressed about something, if I'm busy and you ask me something or you disagree, like, chances are I'm not going to be as open to hearing that naturally versus if, you know, I'm feeling really good about something or I'm relaxed or I don't really have a lot going on in my head. So I think that's such a key point that even uh, we can uh, purposefully as leaders sort of create that environment for our employees and make sure they're in receptive modes and sort of instead of just sort of you know, barraging people and saying, oh, I disagree, or oh, I think that's a bad idea, or why'd you do it that way? So I think that's so smart, Amy. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you well, thank so you. much for all of your wisdom today. I I mean, I'm glad this is on video because I'll be taking notes. I'm sure a lot of the folks watching learned so much from you as well. Thanks again. Well, thank you. I really enjoyed it. Awesome.